May I have your hand? Yes. Last night, I held a little hand, so dainty and so sweet. I thought my heart would surely break, so wildly did it beat. No other hand in all the world can greater solace bring than the pretty hand I held last night, four aces and a king. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trish. That poem is from the Encyclopedia of Patter by Robert Orman. This was his first book, and it was so successful that uh, he wrote many more. I don't have them all here, just a few. But it was also my first book. Uh, I know because it has a little one in the column when I first started my magic library. I had the Gilbert Misto Magic Manual, I suppose technically that was my first book, but that wasn't a book, it was an instruction manual. My dad gave me this for Christmas. I was probably about 10 years old. I remember that in 1953, I did my first show for money. My uncle paid me to do a show for the Junior Modern Woodman Club in San Antonio, but I was so shy uh -huh. that I couldn't really say anything when I was doing a magic tray. <laughs> and so my dad stood at the side of the stage like a carnival barker. So says, and now Misto the Magician will make the ball disappear. <laughs> now it reappears. Let's hear it from Misto the Magician. <laughs> and I suspect that my dad understanding that if I was going to really be a magician, I had to learn how to say things on stage. So he gifted me with this for Christmas. I believe it was that year. <laughs> So this was my first book. The poem that I just did is in this book, and it's slightly different. There's one word different. It says, no other hand in all the world can greater solace bring. And I didn't know at 10 years old what solace meant. And I looked it up in the dictionary and found out that it meant like comfort. And I thought, oh, that word fits a lot better and my 10 year old friends will understand it. Whereas <laughs> they wouldn't understand that. And so I started, telling the poem word for word, except for that one word, that way when I was 10 years old. Now I'm 80 years old and I'm still doing the poem and I still usually use comfort because more people understand that. But this book not only started me talking as a magician, but it led to so many other books. Patter Parade, this is the encyclopedia of Patter. I didn't know what Patter was when I was 10 years old, but by the time I got the Patter Parade, I knew what it was. And then I got professional patter. And, and by the way, I was a professional magician by the time I got this book because I got paid $3 for that show in San Antonio. And the reason I know I'm a professional magician is that the Ted Mack Amateur Hour came to Baton Rouge and they auditioned and I went to audition. And when they found out I'd gotten $3 from my uncle for a show, they wouldn't let me on the show. Wow. I was not an amateur. So, uh, <laughs> professional pattern. Uh, comedy technique, it's about time I start learning how to give these jokes. Magic dotes. Uh, obviously, magic was a big part of what he did, although it wasn't just magicians that he wrote for, but he loved magic. I saw an ad for some of these books in Genie Magazine when I was still very young. Well, 1955. And I wrote him a letter and enclosed a, a check, or money, a check from my dad or a money order said, I'd like to buy these three books that you've got advertised. And by the way, here are two of my magician friends, teenage magician friends. I think they could use some too. Would you send them a catalog? And I got back this very nice letter. And the letterhead said, Robert Orban. That was it. No pictures, no anything. It was, it was a letter from Robert Orban. And I had said that I wanted these books and sent him money. And I had said to send the catalogs. And so his letter said, thank you for your order, books under separate cover. I've sent catalogs to your friends. I had also asked him for an autograph photo. And he said, gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't have any photos right now. When I get one, I'll be sure to send you one. Laugh package. <laughs> Comedy showstoppers. Gag showcase. Oh. The exclusive comedy pot. No. Only a few thousand magicians bought that. Uh, sight bits. I learned the difference between a joke and a sight bit. And of course, I had to learn about one-liners. 
I, which my wife Margo would say I've never learned because I can't stop. <laughs> uh, here's the MC's handbook. So I learned what an MC was. Here's the MC's gold mine. That's after you've read the handbook. And I have to show you this one because it's my favorite of all the Bob Orban Patter books. And these are maybe half of the ones I have. This is Patter for Standard Tricks. And it's what you would expect from the title. It has uh, particular comedy patter stories for different tricks. And I just want to tell you one example, anti-gravico. Most of you in here probably know what that is. You take a Coke bottle full of water, put your hand over it, turn it upside down, move your hand, the water doesn't fall out. Everybody knows eh, it's got some kind of a covering, but you take a toothpick, a matchstick, a golf pencil, and they float up to the top, which is actually the bottom of the right. bottle, obviously, there isn't something covering up because you're putting stuff in, yet the water doesn't fall out. And I used Orban's patter in my high school physics class. And I showed the bottle and the water, and I said, I can explain scientifically how this is done. Water is H2O. H2O is hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen are colorless gases. Colorless gases float in the air. Therefore, water will... And at this point, Mr. Lignus, the science teacher, grabbed that bottle out of my hand. <laughs> but I knew how to keep him from seeing the gimmick. And uh, I got a D minus on that presentation. <laughs> but it was worth it. <laughs> and that pattern came from this book. It's just, Orban was amazing. And when I got married and <laughs> Margo started looking to some of my library and stuff, who's this Robert Orban guy? I told her. So throughout our nearly 58 years now of being married, Anytime I tell a bad joke or a dad joke or any kind of a joke at all, she'll typically look at me and say, was that an Orban joke? <laughs> <laughs> and as those of you who know anything about his life know, he also he didn't just write patter and jokes for comedians. He also did them for movie stars. He did them for comedians like Red Skelton. He did them for politicians mm -hmm. like a senator named Gerald Ford. And when Gerald Ford became unexpectedly president, he brought Robert Orban with him. Wow. And so Robert Orban, the guy that wrote the Encyclopedia of Patter, became the official speech writer for the president of the United States. Wow. And it's just absolutely amazing. And so a few years ago, uh, Margo and I were living in apartments on Holly Street, and I'm upstairs in the office. She's downstairs. That's where the phone is. I hear the phone ring, but I'm not worried about it. I'm doing something on the computer. And all of a sudden, I hear Margo yelling up the stairs, Kent, Kent, it's Bob Orban on the phone. <laughs> so I come running down the stairs, pick it up. And in fact, it was, uh, he was still, he was in his 90s, and he was still reading The Linking Ring, a lifetime member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. And we found, I had written an article about comedy magic. So of course, I had talked about him. And so he was calling to thank me. And in the process, we learned we had so much in common. We were both magicians. We both love comedy magic. We both had his books in our life. We both had AMD, have AMD, age-related macular degeneration, which meant we couldn't drive. We were both married to our childhood sweethearts for decades. And I reminded him of the letter that he wrote me in 1955 and said, you know, I never have gotten that, uh, that autograph photo. And he laughed. He says, yeah, you know, I don't have any photos right now, but I get it. I'll send it to you. And so Bob Orban, famous in his world, a friend in my world. And, and someone who's affected my life in many ways. After he passed away, his uh, grandniece was uh, looking through his desk and found a card that had my name and phone number on it. And so she called. Wow. Uh, I found your name and phone number. Who are you? You know. And, uh, <laughs> I told her some of the stories. So I had an opportunity to uh, go into the Zoom memorial services they had for family and friends. And interestingly, there were very few magicians. Uh, there was me and uh, Rick Heath, uh, who, if you don't know, you should. If you read Linking Ring, you definitely know. He writes more than I do for the magazine. And I believe he's on our uh, call right now because we wanted to make this available to family and friends. Uh, 
And I realized that they didn't really say that much about his being a magician. I mean, Ricky did, and I said a few things. But that's not, the memorial service is mostly for family and friends that knew him as a, as an uncle, as a father, as a grandfather, as a, as a you know, uh, and, and as a joke writer. And I thought, nobody has done a broken wand ceremony for Bob Orman. Mm -hmm. And that's just a shame because he was a magician all his life. He, he did magic before he ever wrote the first pattern. Mm -hmm. And he continued love, his love of magic. And so, for anybody who's not terribly familiar with it, the broken wand ceremony happens when a magician passes and the magic community gets together and honors him and shares stories. And then a magic wand is presented. This one was made by Chris Walden, who makes them lovingly. He's made them, I believe, for eight broken wand ceremonies that I've had the honor of presiding over, starting with. Red Scott Donaldson, the great Scott. I had thought that we were using one of Fred's magic wands, but I watched the video that Ramon Galindo did. Hmm. And uh, no, no, Chris made that one too. And so we have a beautiful magic wand. Magic wands are the classic symbol of the magician's art. I mean, chefs don't use magic wands to stir the boule vase. Uh, uh, you know, golfers don't practice putting with, or, or driving with magic wands. Uh, the, most things that magicians use, playing cards, rabbits, top hats, but beautiful assistants, other people use as well. But only magicians use magic wands. And yet, without the magician to wield the wand, it's really just a stick. So when the magician dies, we break the wand in recognition of the fact that that magician is no longer with us. And yet, <clears throat> if someone is still in your memory, if someone is still in your library, they never really die. And when a magician completes a performance, we usually applaud. But when an amazing magician completes a lifetime of magic, we do what every magician hopes to occasionally have. We give him a standing ovation. Please, a Bible. Rick, thanks for being here.